Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. It's now my great pleasure to interview Jason Bayless, who is a founder of A Radical Guide, the founder of A Radical Guide, which is a user-generated content site that offers listings of historical and current locations, people and places of interest, highlighting the diverse world of resistance. I was really excited to discover this uh, a few weeks back. I discovered you through YouTube and then went to the website and I kind of thought, wow, this is such an amazing project and idea and why hasn't anyone done this before? Or if they have, I've, I've never encountered it. Um, Jason is also a diverse activist with a wide range of experience. He has traveled the US documenting, documenting animal abuse in the entertainment industry. He is also president of the board of directors with the Center for Farm Worker Families, a nonprofit dedicated to education, advocacy, and support for farm worker families in the US and Mexico, and is also on the board of directors for Move to Amend, a coalition of organizations and individuals uh, working against corporate capitalism, including working together to end corporate personhood. Jason also recently retired from the board of the Chiapas, Chiapas Support Committee, a grassroots collective that serves as a center for education and information, information about Chiapas, Chiapas, I don't know if I'm saying that right, the region in Mexico, uh, the Zapatista communities and Mexico in general. Jason is on the Senior Advisory Committee for the Institute for Critical Animal Studies. The ICAS mission is rooted in animal liberation and anarchism and works for total liberation and the dismantling of all systems of domination and oppression. And incredibly, after all of this, in his free time, it's amazing that you've got any after all that, <laughs> Jason also supports volunteers and organizations to co-develop resources and trainings that strike at the roots of systems and structures of oppression. So thanks so much for joining me, uh, joining us on my little channel over in the UK um so yeah maybe first of all we can we can look at some of your history before we look at a radical guide and could you say a little bit more about your experience documenting animal abuse and neglect in the entertainment industry in the us and also is such abuse and neglect still a massive problem um has it or has it got significantly better in your lifetime well first thanks for wanting to chat with me and having me on your channel. Um, um, it's an honor and I'm happy to be here. Right. Um, so your question around documentation of animal abuse. So yeah, for quick background. Um, I spent a couple of years um, following Ringling Brothers and Barnum and Bailey Circus um, around from city to city, state to state, uh, pretty much in the lower 48 here in the US um documenting uh the treatment of, of animals specifically the elephants um at, that were in the circus and what that looked like was uh ringling brothers has three units two travel by train one travel by like semi trucks so the semi trucks they load the animals all into the back of a trailer of a of a, a semi truck and travel city to city the other two load them up in trains and travel um, from city to city. And I went, I would follow and track the two units that went by train. And so what that looked like would be, I would try to arrive to the city before the train arrived. So I could be there at the depot where the train parks. Cause what Ringling brothers would do is take the elephants and all the other animals. And sometimes during the day, sometimes at night, depending on the media market and um, that they chose, they would walk from the train to the arena where they were having the, the show um, for that weekend. So I'd be there when the train arrived so I could film and document all activities happening from the train all the way to the arena. So that would just film walk along the side side of the the you know the side of the road filming and documenting making notes um if we saw and when we did because we did see it often abuse um battery anything that was um unnecessary we would report it to the proper authorities um so we could 
you know, you, and the, here it's the USDA, it's animal control, it's um, a wide, wide range of organizations that we report it to. Um, and then I would also organize demonstrations every night they had a performance. So people would be out front of the, the arena talking, handing out leaflets, holding posters, doing chants, handing out information and talking to people going in there, asking people to have it be their last circus, you know. Um, and a lot of times people did not, you know, they kind of knew, but didn't, at faith never was confronted with it. So we were met with a lot of people handing over their tickets to us and turning away right. on the spot. Um, and long story short, in your in with your question is like, have I seen improvement? Well, Ringling Brother no longer exists here. Um, they went for lack of a better way to say it, went out of business. So they're no longer performing. Um, their sales went down a lot year and year and year because I think their their sales went down because the awareness increased, the awareness of the abuse and the livelihood of these animals. Uh, that would travel from city to city were being more and more exposed. Um, so as information rose, demand decreased and they find closed shop and they no longer travel. Um, so that's not the end of the story because there's still a campaign in China. Let's get the elephants because there's a compound in the state of Florida where the elephants go, but there's also work to try to get these animals into a proper sanctuary. Because what po most people don't know is that Ringling Brothers used um, Asian elephants and the the kind of the path of Asian elements of where they were zoos and other other places would actually go to um, these locations and split up the family and bring them over and breed them and sell them to zoo circuses and stuff. And that's where a lot of these animals came from. There's a great website and I, I can't remember the name of the website. I'll find it before this our conversation's over with so you can share it. That list all the elephants that were in Ringling Care and where they came from. If they were taken from the wild, if they were bred in captivity and they're in kind of their, their whole lineage there. Okay. Um, so yeah, so yeah, it's improving in some areas and not so much in others because the other areas of work was like the horse-drawn carriage industry and specifically uh, um, if, and through my lens and the work that I did was in Manhattan in New York City because um, there's there's a, a big um, horse-drawn carriage industry there, and it's not a proper life for a horse. It's concrete. It's in the middle of the city. Their noses are perfect height of the exhaust pipes of the cars in the city, and they're just constantly breathing that. They're worked through horrible conditions, all, all weather conditions. Um, there's constant accident and cause death and harm to both the animal and, and the people riding the carriage. So there's there's a lot of work of trying to get other alternatives in there in the city versus having a useless horse-drawn carriage thing because it's just nothing but animal abuse for money. Sure, sure. Well, any any I mean any resources, websites, and so on. You can always just send me after the after the interview because it, it will be a few days before I upload it anyway. So um, okay. yeah, um, make a note so I don't forget. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, I mean, it sounds like your campaign was definitely part of raising the awareness on the circus, uh, on the mistreatment of the elephants. So that's, that's really great. Um, yeah, I just, I just, part of me wanted to ask you a question about why, why that kind of circus treatment of mistreatment of animals is so normalized in society, but it's a bit of a, Maybe that's a bit too much of a broad question. I was just remembering when I was a kid going to see a little circus in the UK and there was a, yeah, there was someone riding around on the back of a horse and, you know, I was a kid, I just thought, yeah, you know, that's great. And uh, obviously I didn't think anything about how the animal might have been treated. Um, but yeah, it's just, it's just so normalised. I guess the film industry is a big part of it, isn't it? Because we see a lot of this kind of treatment in films. And TV series and cartoons, even and stuff like that. Uh, um, yeah, I, th I think it's definitely embedded in the collective conscious that domination and control over others is 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 
not frowned upon. It's actually looked towards. And, you know, like, as you said, in the younger age, I grew up in Texas. My parents, you know, we, we grew up on, on a farm there. We had horses, cattle, you know, my chores when I was a kid was to feed the animals before going going to school and then coming home and then helping my dad load up the animals to, in the trailer to take them to the, the local slaughterhouse. So he's like, it's, it's, it's not a, a thought process that we're taught or even asked a question. It's just, no, this is just the way life is. This is the way it's, that's what they're here for. Yeah. And it's not until we're able to step away and actually go, why do we do it? Yeah. <laughs> it changes it. Um, and even deeper to that, you know, I, I, looking back at it now, I think it's funny because when I was a, a young kid, my mom was a costume designer and she made costumes for Ringling Brothers. And I have oh, photos of me oh as, as a little kid behind the scenes at Ringling Brothers with my mom, you know, and the acrobats and, you know, the people who rode, rode the motorcycles and stuff. So, you know, at the, the, we don't know what we don't know. And then when yeah. we do, we have, we need, we need to <laughs> adjust. Sure, sure. 